Hey everybody, tonight we're going to be talking about a uh, about how to replace the old MS4HDB procedure, that, that built-in cursor procedure that's so old and antiquated and does us no good whatsoever anymore. We're going we're gonna to learn how to replace that with PowerShell. Now, we also had an MS4H table and you know we've grown we, we've grown past that so much right because now we need you know for each database for each table for each schema for each login for each sp it could be right for each function it could be for each anything and so those two i mean they did okay in the past and i've used them before right especially the for each db but really the syntax can kind of can, can be kind of hard to remember and it can be uh you know it can be a little bit more difficult if you have multiple statements to run and I'm going to show you how PowerShell is not only easier when it comes to running multiple statements, but it's also a lot more flexible. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, you can do this in PowerShell proper if you want to. We're going to do it in uh, SQL PS. There's really no difference, right? But I'm here, so I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. So I'm in databases. I'm going to right click on, on the database folder here. I'll say start PowerShell. Did I mention this came from a user request? Well, it did. OK, good. So I've got that. I'm going to go ahead and pull a directory just to make sure I'm in the right spot. There we go. There's my directory of databases. <coughs> now, for this, um, I'm going to pull a directory. I'm going to pipe that to a for each. Don't forget your curlies. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off by uh, I'm going to start off by creating a variable and putting the name of the database in a variable. It's just easier to work with that way. So I'm going to say db name equals name. So <coughs> uh, with this Windows basic stuff. Okay, as soon as it's done. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm going to assume that you know the basics, so I'm not going to uh, get into the basics every single time. I'll put a semicolon there to terminate. Now I'm going to call invoke SQL command. And I'm doing it this way for a specific reason, and I'll show you that in a, in a couple minutes. The database parameter. This is where I want to pass the database that, that I'm collecting, right, the, that's in the current loop here. Query. Put it in quotes. Now anything I put inside these quotes is going to be run at the database context. So what I'm doing here <clears throat> is I'm getting a directory, so I'm getting a list of databases. For each one of those, I'm pass I'm just creating a variable with the database name. I'm calling invoke SQL command, passing it the database name, the current database name that I'm in, and I'm going to run whatever query I need to run right here. So in this case, oh, what would be a good simple thing? Uh, let's create a schema. Uh, create schema. Oh, let's call it. Uh, no more no more for HDB now one of the things I like to do here I'll put another terminator here is I like to put uh, the database name at the end of it so I can watch the databases roll by right if I had 3,000 databases on this server the last thing I want to do is just get this blinking cursor the entire time so I like to print the databases to the screen after they finish so that I can tell that it's doing something there we go. Blip, 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 blip. You can see it moving along right there. Excellent. And it's done. And what did I call it? No more 4HDB. So if I come here to like backup test, uh, da -da 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 -da. schemas, refresh that schema, and no more 4HDB. There we go. And I can easily get rid of that as well. Actually, let me get rid of this one. There we go. So I can easily get rid of that as well, just by dropping it. Drop schema. <coughs> there we go. And I've got the provider context warning there, right? I could get rid of that easily by tacking on the flag suppress provider context warning, but uh, it doesn't really matter for the for the sake of this. Okay, so. Th those are the basics, right? Let me go ahead and refresh this to show you that that's gone. There it goes. It is gone. So that is specifically how you you replace MS4HDB with PowerShell. Okay, that 
that's the specific answer to the specific question, but there's more to it than that. Um, like I said, the MS4HDB, the, the syntax is a lot shorter than this, right? But it's also a lot more complicated, um, especially when you, when you want to run multiple statements or if you want to limit the databases, uh, you know, by, you know, by name, by partial name, by, you know, length of the, of the, uh, of the name, <laughs> you know, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could, uh, and PowerShell, you can, you, you know, you can limit it by size, you can limit it by creation date, I mean, you can limit it by anything, right? So any of these guys right here, if I do a directory and do a git member right here, so any of these properties are things that I could run 4HDB on, right? Or run this this version of the cursor on. So, you know, whether it be by owner, all of the databases owned by a certain user, all of the databases in a certain status, you know, in a certain state, all of them with a certain size, or uh, what's another good one? Um, uh, all of them with a certain collation, uh, and so on and so on and so on, right? Uh, any, anything that has an ID above or between a certain number. So all of this is really easy to do in PowerShell. <clears throat> and this is stuff that you can't easily do or with a, with a certain amount of space available, right? So all of these are things that you, that you really can't necessarily do as easily uh, with the uh, MS4HDB procedure. So that's one of the things that makes this really powerful is that you've got a lot more options <clears throat> that are a lot easier to code than had you done it the other way. You would have had to do some kind of complicated dynamic SQL thing to figure that out and then do it, and it's more trouble than it's worth, whereas it's native here, right? So <clears throat> why did I choose to do... Uh, why did I choose to do invoke SQL command instead of some other, quote, native PowerShell way of doing it, right? Um, so let's look at how we would do that, uh, how we would do this exact same thing or thereabouts in, um, in, in PowerShell proper. So let me go ahead and hit escape and I'll get rid of that line. So what I have to do here is let's just do it with a single database, right? So I'll say, uh, let me do a directory here and get a database, cd, database test, there we are, cd, schemas. Good, so I've got my list of schemas there. Now let's say I want to add a new schema to this, right? I have to pull a get member first. And in here somewhere, there it is. There's a create method right there that says create. Now I'm just I'm just trying this. I have no idea if it's actually gonna work. I mean I yeah well actually I okay, guess so I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna do it, but um because what I would have to actually do to do this is I would have to look up the syntax in BOL of exactly how to work this create, uh, how to how to work this create method, and I would probably have to call the alter method as well. So <coughs> the way this works may be different than the way it works if you create a table, may be different than the way it works if you create an SP, may be different than the way it works if you create a login or if you create a um, uh, a database role or whatever right or if you create a function so all of these all of these create methods are probably gonna have their own little quirks and probably work a little bit differently <coughs> and you're gonna have to look that up every single time but I already know the T sequel where is it did I delete it for good it's in here somewhere there we go so I already know the T sequel for creating and dropping schemas right it's drop schema and create schema so why not use that right I already know the T sequel for creating a login I know the T sequel for creating a table for creating an SP for creating a database role right I already know all this T sequel so let's instead of you know trying to re rebuild the wheel every single time Let's work with what we already know instead, and let's just use invoke SQL command to run the T SQL. This is very extensible as well, right? So if I want to create something at the schema level or you know for every single schema, 
then uh, or do something with every single schema, then I can easily create a uh, um, I can easily create a file that has this in it. Or if I want to create, you know, a couple dozen objects. Let's say, for instance, I want to. Here's a very realistic scenario: you, you're bringing on a brand new application, and you've got a whole bunch of users that need to go on all the new databases, right? And so the new application has like four or five databases and you've got like 20 or 50 new users to go on each one of them. So you could easily limit this uh, with a where clause, you know, by packing it to a where object in, in PowerShell and limit it to those four or six databases. And then you can have a text file with all of the create login statements for all the users in there. And, and you know, you're probably better off as well creating a, uh, a database role and putting them all in that role instead, right? Then assigning that role all the permissions you want it to have. <clears throat> well, you can do that all in a single text file and then just call that text file here. So instead of, and sorry about that. So instead of say, uh, doing this, where you do a query, you could just say, input file and I'll just do this like this and you could say so you call in backslash or create users is what we want to do right you can be a text or a SQL or an XML it doesn't really matter it's gonna read the text so you can do that and it'll run whatever's in the file so it doesn't really matter what you put in there that's what makes this so cool <clears throat> is if you want to do this at the database level, you can do it at the database level. If you want to do it at the schema level, you can do it at the schema level, or at the SP level, or at the uh, um, server level. You can do it on multiple servers, and you can do it on multiple databases on multiple servers with very little extra effort, right? So that's one of the things, that's the main reason why I do it like this, because if I don't want to disturb this file, if I've got another file I want to run, for every single database on the server or for every single server in my network, right? <clears throat> All I have to do is either change the contents of this file or create another file and point it at that file and boom, I'm automatically up and running and I didn't have to do anything different. I've already got the framework of how to work with all the databases right here. <clears throat> all I gotta do is save this line to a file, right? And then just run that and just run that PowerShell script, you know, and if I need to change it, then I just pass it the file name. If I'm going to pass it a different file name every single time, then I'll make that a parameter to the script, right? And instead of coming in here and changing it, I'll just pass it the path to the file name when I call the script, and it'll run whatever file I pass it. And, and this just gets easier and easier and easier, right? So <clears throat> that's why I chose to do it this way instead of coming up here and doing the create method, because I've never created... A schema like this I have no idea how to how to run the create method right so I would actually have to look that up so um, and, and I know it's different for a lot of different things so in order to do this properly uh, and, and, and do it quickly we're DBAs guys we're not the brightest cookies in the jar right I mean that's why we're DBAs because we're not as bright as other people so let's make this easy so that we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel every single time. Uh, anyway, there you go. I hope uh, I hope this uh, was was easy to understand. If I skipped anything or if I uh, left anything really unclear, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to write me. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Maybe even make another video, a part two, clarifying uh, some questions that you have. And uh, take care.